Hello everybody and welcome to the Cadillac Cymru Revision Sessions. The session this evening will focus on acids and will be presented by me, um, Mrs Booth. The session will last around 45 minutes where um, I will be running through the relevant content. If you have any questions at all during the session, please use the Q&A section and I will do my best to answer those questions for you at the end of the session. Um, there will, you will also see there will be a hyperlink that will appear in the Q&A section. If you're happy to leave your name and an email address, we'd love to keep in touch with you so that we can send you information about future events. You can click on the link at any time during the session. OK, today's session will be recorded and the recording and any relevant resources will be uploaded to the ASCOL website under Carlam Cymru tab. Thank you very much and let's begin. So today's lesson on acids is suitable for GCSE students, um, in particular those studying in year 11. OK, and this lesson will involve um, looking at what is an acid, acid reactions, some equations, a mixture of words and balanced similar equations here, and then lots and lots of exam questions. So let's begin with what is an acid? Well, acids are classified using the pH scale like you can see at the bottom of the screen. The scale runs from 1 to 14, OK, or the one at the bottom here, 0 to 14, and measures the concentration of hydrogen ions in the substance. All acids contain H plus ions in water. The higher the concentration of H plus ions, the lower the pH and therefore the stronger the acid. That's really important, OK? Um, now, you can make hydrochloric acid, for example, by taking hydrogen chloride gas, reacting it with water, and that produces your H plus and Cl minus ions. So that's, can, you can see there in that equation. So important that you know that an acid is um, to do with the concentration of H plus ions. OK, um, there have been a few questions. In fact, there was one uh, a few years back asking um, to explain the pH scale as well. So make sure you are aware of uh, where um, the acids, alkalis and neutral substances are on um, the pH scale. Make sure you're comfortable with using that. So let's start with strong and weak acids. Lots of students tend to confuse the words strong, weak, dilute and concentrated. So on the next two slides, we have those um, those words, those definitions for you. So a strong acid is an acid which has a high concentration of H plus ions and a weak acid is one which has a low concentration of H plus ions. OK, so we've got some examples for you here. A strong acid would be something like hydrochloric acid with the formula HCl. Now, what does this mean? Why is it strong? Well, when HCl dissolves in water, nearly all the hydrogen atoms form H plus ions. And remember, that is a measure of acidity. Now, if we look at ethanoic acid, OK, which is very different to hydrochloric acid, um, only around 1% of ethanoic acid molecules form H plus ions. So very, very different, which means that ethanoic acid is a weak acid. OK. So what about dilute and concentrated acids? What is the difference, especially when you're thinking of strong and weak? OK, well, dilute acids OK, if you think of a dilute drink, OK, a glass of squash, that's when you have lots of water molecules. And when we're referring to acids or dilute acids, that means there are more water molecules mixed with H plus ions. Now, a concentrated acid means there are fewer water molecules mixed with H plus ions. OK, so I tend to think of this in, um, you know, when I'm making a glass of squash, what is the difference between dilute and concentrated? And it's to do with the number of water molecules. Um, but obviously in this instance, it'll do, it's to do with um, whether how much water is mixed with H plus ions, of course. OK. Right, so here's your first task. I would like to see if you can remember these 
acid reactions. So have a little go, see if you can fill in the gaps for the following four equations, okay? Now, if you need more time, you can pause this if you are watching uh, the recording. Otherwise, let's see what you can do in around 20 seconds and then we'll go through the answers. OK, so let's have a look. Did you get these all correct? So the first one is acid plus metal gives you a metal salt plus hydrogen. OK, the next one, acid plus metal oxide gives you metal salt plus water. And it's exactly the same for the next one with a metal hydroxide that gives you metal salt and water as well. And then finally, if you react an acid with a metal carbonate, you get metal salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. Now, if you don't know these, then I strongly suggest that you learn these off by heart. These four reactions will help you um, so much in not just this unit, but in general understanding of reactions. OK, well then, if you've got those correct. OK, so what about the naming of metal salts? OK, so we've put there, you know, that you form a metal salt in each of those instances on the previous slide. But how do you name the salt? Well, it depends on what acid you're reacting and, of course, what you're reacting with that acid. But we have different acids here. and We're going to stick to the same metal. We're going to use lithium as an example. Now, if you react lithium with hydrochloric acid, then you form lithium chloride. And, and obviously you've also got hydrogen there because you're reacting a metal with acid, but we're not putting hydrogen in because it's the same every time. Um, the next one, if you have lithium with sulfuric acid, you form lithium sulfate. And finally, if you have lithium reacting with nitric acid, you form lithium nitrate. So please try and remember the, um, the names of the salts, okay, or how the acid determines the name of the salt. Um, so you've got chloride, sulfate and nitrate. And so we've got some uh, actual examples now. OK, four different equations here. I'm going to give you around 20 seconds to try and complete these. And again, remember, if you are watching it um, as a recording, you can stop the recording, answer these and then re um, resume the recording once you've finished. OK, so 20 seconds for those watching live. OK, so I think that's enough time for those of you watching live. Let's have a look. Have you got those correct? Right. So the first one, hydrochloric acid plus sodium, which is a metal, gives you sodium chloride plus hydrogen. The second one, sulfuric acid plus copper oxide gives you copper sulfate plus water. The third one, nitric acid plus lithium hydroxide gives you lithium nitrate plus water. And finally, um, hydrochloric acid plus magnesium carbonate gives you magnesium chloride, carbon dioxide and water. OK. Now then, the next task is I would like you to write symbol equations for the following. Also, please remember to balance those symbol equations once you've completed them. And if you can, as a bonus, can you please include state symbols, okay, such as liquid, aqueous, gas, and so on. Okay, so 20 seconds, off you go. OK, 
Right, let's have a look at how you did then. Now, here we have symbol equations. So here we go. The first, um, have a look at that. Make sure you've balanced out the um, all of the elements. Remember that hydrogen is um, exists as H2, it's diatomic. So because of that, you need to ensure then that you have two hydrogens on the left hand side of the arrow and that will obviously affect the chlorine and so on. So just make sure you've um, started with hydrogen as a diatomic molecule. The next then we have uh, sulfuric acid and copper oxide. OK, so make sure that you are using your iron table, which you will have in the exam. OK, so you don't need to learn all the ions. However, you do need to know how to form formally. So H2SO4, for example, for sulfuric acid. Did you get that correct? And balancing very easy here, OK, because you don't need to add anything. Once you form the formulae, it should all be balanced if you've done it correctly. Number three, uh, what we've got here again, uh, it's balanced already, which is fantastic. But again, forming those formally, that's the really important part. If you're not confident, you do need to practice that. You need to look at your iron table, make sure you can identify the positive and the negative ions. And remember, you need to have the same number of positive and, and negative um, charges. And therefore, once you've done that, cancel those charges out and you should have um, the correct formula. But if you can't do that, please do practice that. And then the final one here, um, as you can see, we've got all the formally correct. Um, the only addition was on the right hand side, you have two hydrogen atoms and you only had one on the left. You need to add a uh, number two in front of the HCl. OK, um, and that's all balanced. So well done if you got those correct. So my next question is what I'd like you to do is use the acids to determine metal reactivity. OK, so there was a reaction of a metal with an acid. It doesn't matter which acid, OK, because what we've got, we've got three metals. We've got potassium, copper and zinc. And by looking at the observations in the table, I would like you to decide which reacting metal corresponds to that observation. So, for example, if you have the extremely rapid reaction, the one in the middle there, hydrogen gas evolved immediately. Which one of those metals do you think is more likely to fit in there? OK, so I'm going to give you a few seconds to have a go at that. OK, so we've got the extremely rapid reaction in the middle there. At the top, we've got a fast reaction hydrogen gas evolved and at the bottom reacts with strong acids when heated and pressurised. Let's have a look. So um, the extremely rapid reaction with an acid was um, with potassium. As you can imagine, potassium is a very reactive group one metal and will react rapidly with acid. The next then, if we look at maybe the bottom, so copper, this metal here, because it's um, unre relatively unreactive, it requires strong acids and heat and pressure in order to react. OK, so obviously not um, not an easy reaction there without putting some energy in. And then the one in the middle is zinc, a fast reaction, hydrogen gas evolved somewhere in the middle because it's not rapid and it doesn't require heat and pressure. OK. OK, we're now going to move on to making crystals of copper two sulfate. OK, this is um, possibly one of my favourite experiments um, in that the crystals at the end are, they always blow my mind how blue they are and how big they are if you leave them for a long period of time. Right, so copper two sulfate can be made by reacting copper two oxide or copper two carbonate with dilute sulfuric acid. Yeah, this is important. OK, you don't want this to throw you. You can use copper oxide or copper carbonate. It doesn't matter. OK, both of them will give you the same um, end product, which is the copper sulfate. OK, 
Uh, obviously, if you were to write these reactions out, you would get water as one product with copper oxide and you'd get carbon dioxide and water um, with copper two carbonate as well as the salt. So that's the only difference here. OK. So first one, as you can see, we've got copper two oxide plus sulfuric acid gives you copper sulfate plus water and then copper two carbonate plus sulfuric acid gives you copper sulfate plus water plus carbon dioxide. And this obviously will escape during the process, OK, during the, the mixing and the, and the filtering and so on. So what are the steps required in order to make crystals of copper two sulfate? Well, if you have a look at the table below, um, the first is to mix or react. OK, now what you are doing is you're adding excess base, OK, um, such as copper oxide or copper carbonate to the sulfuric acid in the beaker and you're giving it a good stir. That's the first step. The second step you will need to filter. And the reason why is because you have added excess base and that base is insoluble. OK, after a point, once it's a saturated um, solution, once it's reacted, all the acids reacted, no more base will be soluble. So we need to remove that by filtration. OK, and that base then will collect in the filter paper and you'll be left with your um, with your products, your salt, your water. Uh, and if you've you know, use copper carbonate when the carbon dioxide will be escaping um, during the initial reaction. And then third uh, is evaporate. OK, so in both instances, you will have produced a salt and water. That water, you need to separate that now from the salt, OK, in order to form your crystals. And so you can do that by evaporating the water using um, a Bunsen burner and evaporating dish. Now, that, this can be done where you're heating the water and it's evaporating quite rapidly. However, you will form small crystals in doing so. If you would like bigger crystals, then you will need to leave it possibly um, on a windowsill if it's a nice, you know, if, if it's a summer and it's nice and sunny or possibly um, near a, a radiator where the water can evaporate slowly. OK, so the slower the rate of evaporation, the larger your crystals. OK, so here's a question for you. In fact, uh, five questions uh, rolled into one. Um, this time we're looking at making magnesium sulfate crystals. OK, and the question is magnesium sulfate can be made by adding excess magnesium oxide to sulfuric acid. Magnesium oxide is insoluble in water. OK. So question A, write a word equation for this reaction. B, write a symbol equation for this reaction. C, state why excess magnesium oxide is added. D, state how you can obtain crystals from the solution. And finally, E, if the reaction is carried out with hydrochloric acid instead of sulfuric acid, magnesium chloride would be formed. Write the chemical formula for magnesium chloride. OK, so off you go. I'm going to give you 20 seconds. If you're watching live, that will give you a little bit of time to attempt some of these. And for everyone watching the recording, please stop the video now and um, continue once you've completed all five questions. OK, off you go. OK, I think we are going to move on to have a look at the answers. Um, let's see how you got on. So in first, we'll go for A, write a word equation for the reaction. So it would be magnesium oxide plus sulfuric acid gives you magnesium sulfate plus water. OK. Question B, write a symbol equation for this reaction. So have a look at that symbol equation there. Have you got the same answer? Um, very, very luckily here, it does already balance. OK, as long as you have the formally correct, then it is already balanced 
and obviously include your state symbols too. Question C, state why excess magnesium oxide is added. Well, that's to ensure that all the acid has reacted, all the sulfuric acid has reacted. D, state how you can obtain crystals from the solution. Well, you can heat the salt solution in an evaporating dish. And like I said, if you do this slowly, you will get larger crystals. If you do it rapidly, you will get smaller crystals. And finally, if the reaction was carried out with hydrochloric acid instead of sulfuric acid, magnesium chloride would be formed. Write the chemical formula for magnesium chloride. Now, um, once again, have a look at your iron table and you should see that magnesium has an ion of Mg2 plus and um, chlorine is Cl minus. Therefore, to balance out, you need two um, chloride ions to balance the one magnesium ion and you get MgCl2. Well done if you've got those correct. OK, so um, we have lots of exam questions now. OK, 13 questions in all. Um, we'll see how we get on going through them. But as I said, um, if you do need more time, you can stop um, and start the video whenever you like. These questions are followed by the mark scheme. OK, so you've got all of your um, the answers here as well. So if you're watching this back um, or if you need to slow down the video, remember you do have the mark scheme available to you. OK. Right, so question one now. We love these kinds of questions um, you will you'll see you've probably already seen there's lots of examples like this where you have this kind of diagram which is on the left hand side um, and you'd have to have a look at this diagram. There will be bits that are filled in the bits that are not. Um, for some reason, this kind of diagram scares a lot of students. You just need to look at it as a different way of writing out those equations or those there's three here. OK. The three equations, three acid equations, just put going up, down, and to the side as opposed to um, one under the other. Okay. Right. So, first of all, we want you to name compound A. Then give the names of the blue solution B and gas C formed in reaction three. And there's a space for you to write both of those answers down. Then write the balance symbol equation for reaction one. And then reaction one was repeated using magnesium instead of zinc. Explain the difference, if any, that you would expect to see. OK. So have a go at those 10 seconds and then I will go through the mark scheme. OK, let's have a look. Right then, so you can see the mark scheme is on the right hand side and that's the same. That's the case for all 13 of these questions. OK, um, also I have included the question on the left hand side. You'll notice it is in the tiniest font ever, but that's just in order to fit it in so you can refer to it rather than go back and forth on the slides. OK, so let's have a look. Um, compound A. OK, here they would have accepted magnesium oxide or magnesium hydroxide. OK, uh, and that's because what you're forming is magnesium chloride solution. So that is your metal salt plus water. OK, um, for that reason, they would not accept magnesium or magnesium carbonate because in that final box, it wouldn't just say magnesium chloride solution. It would have to say plus a gas carbon dioxide or plus a gas hydrogen, for example. So there's only two possible answers there. Next, give the names of the blue solution B and gas C formed in reaction three. OK, so the blue solution would be copper chloride. OK, also accepting the formula there, if that's what you've put down. And gas C would be carbon dioxide, also accepting CO2. Now, if you have a look, you are reacting in reaction three, the hydrochloric acid with copper carbonate. So straight away, you should be thinking I'm making three products, water, metal salt and carbon dioxide. And then finally, write the balance symbol equation for reaction one. Well, reaction one, if you're going up from the central, the central box, you've got hydrochloric acid plus zinc gives you zinc chloride. Um, plus hydrogen. OK, 
and you can see the symbol equation just on the right hand side. The only thing that you had to do once you created the formula was remember that hydrogen exists as a diatomic molecule and therefore you need to put a 2 in front of the HCl and that just balances out that equation. Ignore part C on the mark scheme. OK, this was um, not included. Oh, actually, um, excuse me, I am um, I'm incorrect. C is there. It's just above hiding right in plain sight. Reaction one was repeated using magnesium instead of zinc. Explain the difference, if any, that you would expect to see. Right, so magnesium is more reactive than zinc. OK, so we would expect a difference. Um, you could say something such as bubbles of gas formed faster or magnesium disappears faster because it's more reactive. OK, um, any of those would be fine. It wouldn't accept get hotter, so that is not accepted. OK. Right, question two then. When metals react with acids, they form a salt and hydrogen gas. Complete the word equation for the reaction between magnesium and sulfuric acid. Once you've done that, can you give the test that can be used to identify hydrogen gas and include the expected observation? And then the next part, the salt formed when zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid is zinc chloride. Give the formula of the ions present in zinc chloride and then give the formula of zinc chloride. OK, so 10 seconds for you. Uh, see how speedy you are. Off you go. OK, then, so um, let's have a look at the answers. So on the right hand side, um, complete that word equation. Um, what's missing is magnesium sulfate. Give the tests that can be used to identify hydrogen gas. Well, that would be to use a lit splint. And if you pop that near the uh, where the hydrogen gas is evolving, then um, you would hear a squeaky pop. OK. Um, the next part, uh, can you give the formulae of the ions present in zinc chloride? They are Zn2 plus and Cl minus. So again, you can just pull those straight out of the ion table, which is going to be with you in the exam. And then you just need to pop those together, remembering that you need two chloride ions to balance out the one zinc ion. And that gives you a formula of ZnCl2. Well done if you got those correct. Question three, hydrochloric acid, HCl, reacts with sodium hydroxide solution to form sodium chloride and water only. Write a balanced symbol equation for this reaction. Now, notice symbol is in bold. Um, please don't write a word equation, OK, because you will get no marks. Off you go. OK, let's have a look then. So here we have HCl plus NaOH gives you NaCl plus H2O. OK, well done if you got that right. That was a nice simple one in terms of um, the balancing as well in that it required no balancing as long as you get the formula correct. Right, question four. Now, here we have an example where there are four equations, one going up, one going down, one going to the left, one going to the right. OK, so again, don't think, wow, this looks scary. I want you to look at this for what it is, which is just four equations written differently. OK, now have a look at that, um, that image. OK, you need to name the following substances. Blue solution A. Colourless gas B and alkali C. Once you've done that, can you please balance the symbol equation for the reaction between zinc and dilute hydrochloric acid? Now, just have a look at that diagram. In the middle there, you've got dilute hydrochloric acid. And then think about what you're producing 
for example, with alkali C, how can you go from dilute hyd hydrochloric acid to sodium chloride solution? Think about what alkali C could be. Is there a gas produced? Is there not a gas produced? OK, so have a look at them as an equation. Treat it as an equation. Off you go. OK, so let's have a look. So blue solution A, if we work downwards then, so it's got hydrochloric acid plus copper oxide gives you copper chloride. OK, and that would be as well with water. OK, because it's a solution, but you don't need to put the water in at this point. Colourless gas B. So uh, let's have a look. So we've got dilute hydrochloric acid plus copper carbonate gives you blue solution A. So that is the salt plus the water and then colourless gas B. Now, if you're reacting the acid with a copper carbonate so a carbonate, you are going to produce carbon dioxide. So that's the answer, carbon dioxide. And then finally, alkali C. So you've got hydrochloric acid and you're forming sodium sodium chloride solution, then your alkali C must be sodium hydroxide. OK. Question five, we have another one of these images. OK, so hopefully by the end of these 13 questions, you'll see a trend in the type or the style of question that is asked when we are discussing acids. OK, now this time this one is to do with the reactions of nitric acid. OK, so again, four equations, one up, one down, one to the left, one to the right. So let's have a look at what you are required to do. Now, you need to name powder C, solution B and alkali E. And then you need to name gases A and D and describe how they can be identified. Now, think about the marks here with this kind of diagram as well. OK, we have seven marks awarded here. So that's lots and lots of marks for um, what could be, if as long as you know those four equations, what could be quite a straightforward question. OK, so have a go and we'll go through the answers in um, a few seconds. OK, then let's have a look. So the first one now, um, powder C. So we know that if we react powder C with nitric acid, we get a blue solution B and gas D. Now, because of the blue solution, we know it contains copper two plus. And because of gas D, we know it must be a carbonate because it's releasing carbon dioxide. OK. Um, the reason why we know that's carbon dioxide and not hydrogen is if you look upwards, um, so the equation going up, we've got acid there plus magnesium ribbon, that's just a metal, and that will give you gas A, okay, which is hydrogen. Now, gas A isn't present in that um, equation that goes across to the right, therefore it must be carbon dioxide. So that's another reason for um, making sure you know you've got the right gas. Um, Solution B is copper nitrate. OK, solution B, uh, it's blue. OK, so uh, make sure you, you, you're taking that into consideration. If it contains copper two plus, we've got that blue coloured solution. And then finally, alkali E, we have nitric acid plus an alkali gives you sodium nitrate solution. So that is sodium hydroxide. OK. Then um, next we've got name gases A and D. So we've already discussed this. OK, so gas A is hydrogen and you can test for this using a um, lit splint, which pops next to the hydrogen. And then you've got gas D, which is carbon dioxide. Um, and the test for carbon dioxide is that it will turn lime water milky. OK, when it is um, bubbled through lime water. 
also described as maybe turning it, turning it cloudy. OK, right then. Question six. When sodium hydroxide reacts with sulfuric acid, a solution of sodium sulfate is produced. Firstly, we want you to give the formula of sodium sulfate. Then describe how crystals and sodium sulfate can be uh, obtained from the solution of sodium sulfate. And finally, phosphoric acid can be used to remove rust, Fe2O3. Balance the equation for the reaction taking place. Just a quick pointer for um, part C. You may not have heard of phosphoric acid before. It's not maybe something that you'd be familiar with. It doesn't matter. OK, if you see anything like this that's unfamiliar, you can still do the task. OK, it's irrelevant almost. It's just um, something you need to gloss over and do the task in hand, which is to just balance this equation. OK, so off you go 10 seconds or so, and then I'll give you the mark scheme. OK, so here we go. The first one then, sodium sulfate has the formula Na2SO4. That obviously is made using the iron table or help you, that can help you. Describe how crystals of sodium sulfate can be obtained. Um, so heat until half volume, that removes some of the water and then you can leave the remaining water to evaporate to form your crystals. OK. So there we go. That's the second part for you. And then the third is um, probably, you know, on the more difficult side of balancing equations, but um, shouldn't be a problem. So we've got Fe2O3 plus 2H3PO4 gives you 2FePO4 and then 3H2O. The following diagram shows the pH scale and the pH values of some common substances. From the substances above, name the strongest acid, the weakest alkali and a neutral substance. Off you go. OK, and hopefully this is relatively straightforward as long as you know your pH scale. So we've got the strongest acid here is down the bottom of the scale between zero and one, and that is battery acid. Uh, the weakest alkali, usually lots of um, confusion here going for high numbers, but the weakest alkali is the alkali that has a pH closest to seven, but isn't seven. And in this case, it is blood. And then a neutral substance is anything with a pH of seven. So that will be pure water. OK. Eight, John was studying the reactions of acids with three different substances, A, B and C. He recorded his observations and temperature changes in the table below. So we've got substance added to acid, we're calling it substance A, B or C. The observations are, first one, bubbles of gas produced, gas collected, turns to lime water milky, substance reacts to produce blue solution. OK, so a few clues here. You've got something that turns lime water milky, so it must be something carbonate because it has to have released carbon dioxide in order for that to happen and then produce a blue solution. OK, so have to think about what element produced this blue solution or was, was responsible. Um, then B, no gas produced, substance reacts to produce a blue solution only, but no gas. So that's really important. And then C, no visible change. OK, when reacted with an acid. So. Let's have a look and see what A, B and C are. Um, a would be copper carbonate because, um, as it said, you are producing a gas that when uh, collected, it turns lime water milky, so it must be a carbonate. And the only one we've got here is copper carbonate, which also co corresponds to the blue solution being produced, which is the copper two plus, and that's what's responsible there. Next, we have no gas produced substance reacts to produce a blue solution. Um, that is copper is also present, but this time uh, no gas. So it must be just producing um, the salt and water. So copper oxide. And finally, if there's no visible change, OK, that means that um, you're not producing any um, change in colour, no gas, nothing at all. In fact, what we're what we're doing is a neutralisation reaction. 
and that would be involving an acid with sodium hydroxide. Right, so we've got question nine now, and it's another example of one of these um, boxes, okay, so various boxes. So have a look, can you identify substances A to E, and then give the chemical formula for zinc chloride. Okay, let's have a look. So here we go, we've got um, A to begin with. Okay, it says gas A is carbon dioxide because we are reacting at hydrochloric acid with zinc carbonate. B is magnesium chloride. Okay, that's because we're reacting magnesium with hydrochloric acid. Then C, gas C is hydrogen because we're reacting a metal with an acid. So you're going to form hydrogen and a metal salt. D um, is going to be sodium chloride because you are reacting hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. And finally, E can be one of two. OK, you're producing a copper two chloride solution. OK, and that is solutions with just with water, no gas. And therefore, it's either be um, hydrochloric acid reacting with copper two oxide or copper two hydroxide. And finally, give the chemical formula for zinc chloride. Once again, just pull the ions from the table and if you balance them out correctly, you need two chlorides, one zinc, put them together and you've got ZnCl2. Now we're almost there. We have three questions remaining. Oh, in fact, four because it includes question 10. Um, so let's have a look at this one. This one is slightly different, okay? We've got ethanoic acid here, okay? Um, and both equations, one goes up and one goes down. So two equations in total. Can you name white solid A to start with? Then name colourless solution B. Dilute ethanoic acid reacts with magnesium less vigorously than dilute sulfuric acid at equal concentration. Give the reason for this difference in behaviour. OK, and then ethanoic acid is formed when an alcoholic drink such as wine is left exposed to the air. Give the name of the compound in wine which turns into ethanoic acid. Possibly a slightly trickier one there, but see if you can have a go. OK, a few seconds for you and then I'll show you the mark scheme. Okay, right, let's have a look at the answers then. So first one, we have name white solid A. So we've got ethanoic acid reacting with solid A to give you sodium ethanoate and carbon dioxide. Right, so carbon dioxide should be lights flashing. There must be a carbonate involved here. So white solid A is sodium carbonate. Well done if you've got that. Then we have colourless solution B. Well, if we're reacting ethanoic acid with magnesium, you are going to form magnesium ethanoate. OK, now this might not be something you know, you, you know that, that um, you've looked at hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and so you know how to name the salts. However, they have put um, in the top box sodium ethanoate. So as long as you're observant, OK, even if you didn't know how to end that um, the name of the metal salt, it is already there for you. OK, you just had to find that. Um, so, yeah, the answer is magnesium ethanoate. And then give reason why um, dilute ethanoic acid reacts with magnesium less vigorously than dilute sulfuric acid. Well, that's because ethanoic acid is a weaker acid. OK, it has a higher pH than that of sulfuric acid. So the pH is um, nearer to um, uh, towards the middle of the pH scale. Ethanoic acid pH is 3, 4 and sulfuric acid is 1, 2. OK, uh, ethanoic acid has a lower H plus ion concentration than sulfuric acid. So all of these reasons um, will explain why there's a less vigorous reaction between ethanoic acid and magnesium. Um, OK, and finally, excuse me, ethanoic acid is formed when an alcoholic drink such as wine is left exposed to the air. 
give the name of the compound uh, in wine which turns into ethanoic acid and the answer is ethanol okay which is an alcohol now we have gone over the allocated time so i'm just going to show you that you do have um, question 11 here which is a nice six mark question okay comparing once again um, the reaction of ethanoic acid and sulfuric acid and um, have a look at that and you do have the mark scheme then and it's broken down for you okay question 12 um, a few more questions here uh, to do with pH to do with gas testing um, to do with sulfuric acid reaction so have a look at that um, and we also, um, I've popped the mark scheme there for you as well. And finally, 13, I thought it's um, unlucky for some, but uh, is a, a lucky number for me. So that's why you've got 13 questions. Um, the final one, looking at pH scale, taking information from the pH scale. So make sure you, you look at this carefully and then it finishes with some reactions and a gas test. Okay. And there you have the mark scheme for that. So hopefully you found that useful. Um, it's packed with questions for you. So have a go at all those questions. As I said, this is really good opportunity for you to watch this recording, stop and start at each point, attempt all the questions and the mark scheme is there for you as well. So um, make sure you're confident with all of the acid reactions. Make sure you've learned those equations off by heart and um, remember that you do have your periodic table and iron table with you in the exam. OK, so um, hopefully that was helpful. And if there are any questions, um, I will attempt to answer them now and um, any in the Q&A box. Other than that, I hope to see you at um, another session in the future. Thank you very much.